Aloha mai kako and welcome to Midday Manao with Manu and Mehana. Mm-mm. 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 Yeah, we'll just we'll just double it up <laughs> on the intro. <laughs> I'm so excited about today's show here. And again, at the top of our show, we'd like to thank, you know, our sponsors, right? So CNHA, of course, and Kaiser Permanente, the National Community Benefit Fund. You know, thank you guys for supporting this and always supporting us. You know, today we have such a good show and a good discussion, Manu. We're going to like pick... Pick, pick, pick your brain today. And then we have a fabulous guest coming up later. Yeah, he's almost as ha- handsome as Manu. Oh. Yeah, almost, almost as handsome as you know, Manu. There's a phrase in Hawaiian, hele a ma'a. And that means you, you go until you become accustomed. And this is like our third or fourth time that we're we're working together. I've known her since she was a little tiny kaikamahine. <laughs> And um, and I was a, a lot skinnier. <laughs> <laughs> we both were. We uncle. both were. Yes. But but no. But this uh, this program midday manao and we, and we say that mm 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 mm. So midday manao manu mehana all m. So in case one of us has to retire, anybody with an m, <laughs> please apply. You're up next. You're yeah up next. yeah. Are you m people? But this yeah. but hele ma'a. So we we have really gotten accustomed to this and. Oh, yeah. uh, it's my first podcast. I've worked with Kamehameha Schools and Mehana, you're with uh, Council for Native Hawaiian mm-hmm. Advancement. Uh, we are getting excited for the upcoming uh, Native Hawaiian Convention, Hulihia. And that's a little hint as to who our special guest will be a little bit later uh, this afternoon. That is, that is. We won't give them any more, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's, let's jump into our, our show. You know, our first topic, Manu, sure. is that um, today is the day that we celebrate, of course, La Kamehameha. All right. Right, and and tomorrow is the day that is recognized as his birthday. But you, of course, we rely on you yeah. to give us the lowdown. Well, here's, a, here's a little Kamehameha bit of lowdowns. First of all, um, J- June 11th is not the birthday of Kamehameha. Um, uh, and just the, t- taking a look at that alone, uh, we look at uh, Mele Ko'ihonua, or chance uh, of, of, of genealogy, and of birth, or the chance that, that really that perpetuate Mo'olelo. He's born during the time of Ikua, or very or Ikua at the time of thunder and, 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 and so the stormy season, which is probably, and it differs on different islands, you know, the, the way the months go, oh, yeah. uh, and, and, how, and, how, and how their names are, are, are remembered. But, uh, so, but the reason why, so it, it, it could have been October, November when, right. when he was actually born. The year is completely unknown. And there's, I've, I've been through, there's a, a, a report in a Hawaiian language newspaper from the 19th century that gives all of these different uh, um, uh, historians who give different dates, uh, different dates. One of them was Samuel Kamakau, who says, oh, uh, Kamehameha was born in 1736. And it's like, and then he's criticized by another historian who says Samuel Kamakau always gets his dates wrong. <laughs> and so, and then the latest date that's remembered for Kamehameha's birth is uh, 1758, and that would have made him 20 years old at the arrival of Kapena Kuke of Captain oh, yeah. Cook. But it was his grandson Lat Kapu Aiva, and Kapu Aiva, uh, who becomes Kamehameha the fifth. Um, decided to create a day to honor the, the mm. legendary accomplishments of his grandfather. He never knew his grandfather. So Kapu Aiva was born uh, you know, long after Kamehameha's death in 1819. And he had initially selected his own birth date, uh, December 11th, as, uh, mm. as the day that would be Kamehameha Day. Um, what happened, and he makes that proclamation in, in 1871, uh, and it was it's known as Olelo Kauoha. And Olelo Kauoha is a proclamation that Kamehameha Day. But then he decides, because there's so much rain uh, at that time mm. uh, in December, obviously, because that's... No can uh, celebrate. No oh, can. Yeah. Yeah. And he wanted it to be a, a celebration of, uh, with a lot of the, the, the popular you know, games and horse races and things like that of the time. So he went six months exactly after his birthday. And mm. that's how we ended up with, uh, June, with June 11th. 11th. And so... The proclamation in 1871 by uh, Lat Kapu Aiva, uh, Kamehameha Elima, uh, and then the first celebration was in 1872. So, Haoli La Kamehameha. Oh, yeah. And, you know, for those, and many people, there's even a song that talks about Kala Hanau o Kana'i o Kuni. And, you know, if, it's, if, if people remember it or, or think of it as, as the birthday, because all of our other Ali'i birthdays are uh, exactly uh, that. Right. Kuhio Day, for instance, uh, March right. 26th. Right. And Lili'u Okalani, September 2nd. Okay. 
But Kamehameha Day uh, is uh, really six months after Kamehameha the fifth, the Mo'opuna of Kamehameha Ekahi. And with that, we, uh, we say, Hauoli la Kamehameha ya kakoa pau. What's important, why should we keep celebrating these holidays, these national holidays? I, I think, um, uh, I, 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 I gradually refer to them as Hawaiian national holidays. I think that uh, they are a part of the identity of the Oivi Hawaii. And uh, that is, uh, and this is a kula ivi, which is, which, and so all those words that have ivi in them, kula ivi, oivi, uh, have to do with the bones of our ancestors. And that is where the mana of oh, our yeah. land uh, 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 is, is stored. And so uh, the things that, that perpetuate identity, like Hawaiian names, Manu Aikuhana, Mehana Okala, uh, and, and some of the names that, that, that our, our children and our, our community wears are, are newer names, but they, they are a part of our identity. So Kamehameha Day reminds us of a, of a, a time uh, very, very different, and a kuana ike, a worldview that's very different from our own. So Kamehameha, however, uh, you know, he lived for 41 years uh, alongside foreigners who, mm. who became his friends mm. and, and advisors. And, uh, and they worked, they really worked for him and they learned his language very quickly. Oh, yeah. uh, although Kamehameha, by the time he passes away in 1819, he was, uh, he was kind of fluent, in, uh, a little fluent in, in, in German, French, and English. But he didn't have to speak those languages. He was interested in them. And he was also interested in technology. Mm. So for that alone, it's a long answer for a no. very short question. No, um, that's so great. And and those things are purely to our Ola today. Yeah. Right? All of our interests and our um, pursuits um, in the areas of technology, in the areas of, of languages or cultures and, and getting to know the world. Again, I always tell people, we've traveled the world, um, right? And, the, and one thing that we know when we travel the world is that we always come home, yeah. right? Come home to Hawaii. But and when we're away, and you say you're from Hawaii, what's the right. reaction from oh, anybody? Love, it's like, know, oh, yeah. Hawaii, right? Yeah, that right. Kind of thing. And we're able to share culture, you yeah. know, um, and and something that we're going to talk about a little later today, you know, just our aloha is our superpower, mm -hmm. right? You know what we offer to the world. So I think that's mahalo nui for that that long answer. Um, the long <laughs> answers are the best <laughs> answers, you know, um, especially from you, Manu. Yeah, Such yeah. a wellspring of information. And it's of not it's not to just you know hai mana or just to share thoughts, but you know a lot a lot has gotten into this brain <laughs> um, over time. Well, and, uh, my no ko lolo. But ha yeah. happy uh, you lolo you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, different different word. Lolo yeah. brain lolo nam kind of like a numb yeah. skull. <laughs> so okay, wait. Okay, so now he's making trouble to me. Okay, yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm okay. Just, anyway, let's Now go. he's going off script, but it's okay, it's okay. Do okay. we have a script? Yeah. <laughs> We've been off script from the beginning. Yeah, yeah we, we don't, don't want to show to off, off script. Off script, okay. yes. So here, Hawaii, what's, what's, yeah, what's next? Yeah, yeah. You know, one of the things that just came out, uh, uh, actually a few weeks ago, what came out was a publication um, that the federal government under the Department of the Interior had published a report about um, the boarding schools, right? The Native Americans and their plight um, within the boarding schools. Mm -hmm. Now, that is significant, and I'll, and I'll jump to the end, and, and hopefully we can, w let's have a little discussion about that, yeah. because one of the major conclusions, or the major conclusion, you know, was that these children were taken away from their homes, right? Assimilated, taught to assimilate yeah. into um, the American um, systems, all the meanwhile, the land of their people was being stolen, yeah. right? And so you see this kind of coercion happening um, between what education, and education is usually seen as, as something very, uh, you know, enlightening, a, a part of something that, you know, people willingly take part in. Right. But here you have a very um, destructive um, intention, yeah. right? That yeah. happens, um, and and we have we share a similar situation here with our olelo and with our culture and and our religion and our beliefs, our beliefs in ourselves, yeah. right? Um, we we both from Kamakaku and you know uh, mm -hmm. very famous um, author that we're exposed to, Gugi mm -hmm. Watiango, mm -hmm. talks about the cultural bomb. Right and and how that annihilated the taking away of our language and the taking away of our our traditions and our practices, you know, annihilated mm. our people's own belief in ourselves. Yeah. Then and and then thus, you know, everything. You know, that's after, that's after. A, uh, now I'm thinking because 
boarding schools, uh, you know, the, the, the word in Hawaiian, Hanai, and Hanai means, you know, we, we, we think of it uh, in more modern terms as to adopt, mm-hmm. but Hanai means to raise. Uh, when you take a child out of one hale and put them into another hale, and, and, and in the Hawaiian uh, sense, sometimes it would be, you, this one's going to go live with grandma, and grandma's going to Hanai. But the culture of that house is different from the culture of the house they came from. When you talk about a boarding school, and, and boarding schools vary, but all of them have their own culture. Now, I don't mean ethnic culture. I mean how their belief systems are. Uh, uh, if you think of them, I'm, I'm thinking of like New England, and uh, you hear of uh, you know, stories of people being sent off to a boarding school, and they're very kind of a, a little bit bougie, you know, kind of high maka maka a little bit, but that's a culture. You look at, at, at a, a completely different uh, example is a palipa'ahau, a prison, mm-hmm. is where people are removed from one area, put into another, and that's the culture there as well. Mm-hmm. So uh, whenever you take uh, anyone and put them into a living situation, and that word hanai, you are being nourished or nurtured, and not, not always in a good way, uh, to achieve the values of the, of, of the entity uh, or the house that you are now living in. Boarding school, uh, the same was with, you know, in, in our own uh, culture. Uh, 1839 was the, the founding of the Chief's Children's School, which mm. became known mm. as Royal School. And so our Ali'i children, and there weren't a whole lot of them, there were about 13 of them, but they went to go live, but they were right in the middle of town. So they, right. you know, if they had to, if their kahu came or their, their parents, they weren't, they weren't removed, but they did learn a culture uh, as as requested by the Ali'i and, and, and hiring and bringing on uh, Amos Star Cook and his wife, uh, Juliet Montague Cook. And they became the kumu of all of these Ali'i. And so their culture, because of being lavehanaiya, at least for a short while, was influenced. So back to the, the, the American Indian story, mm-hmm. it's really very, uh, it's a little different from ours, I'd say. Yeah, it is, it is. And, and definitely um, very tragic as tragic. far as, you know, they've uncovered, you know, burial grounds with um, a lot of these, these keiki, these they kamali. Were, they were abused. That were abused, yeah. that were um, traumatized, right? That the, the communities themselves have never really kind of recovered from, even, even it, up until now. You know, what, you know what's interesting? thing is that physical abuse is, is, is one, one thing that's very obvious. You think you see people that are physically abused but mental abuse right. and, and mm-hmm. really uh, or, or demoralizing uh, right. uh, children is just uh, it's unthinkable in, in today's terms. Well, we have, you know, they always say uh, history, you know, uh, hindsight is 2020. Mm. Oh, yeah. It's really clear because you can, we can always look backwards and it's hard to look forward but what we have the opportunity to do and what you do at the Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement is to advance, which is to look forward. Oh, yeah. And you look forward by bringing things from before you that make sense, that are relevant. You know, one of the things that, so, so let's, let's talk about 2022, right? And, and something that's related mm-hmm. to this um, particular issue of the boarding school. So, the, so we didn't have that experience. We didn't have that experience that is, it is unique to those of the Americas and, and Canada. Right, um, mm-hmm. and what the report really focused on. But what we did have here was this idea of the taking away of in the education system our language. Yes. Right. So we definitely had that impact um, in the late 1800s, into the beginning of the 1900s, then all the way fast forward up to you know the 1980s when we start to again revitalize and remember, you know, yeah. put back together yeah. the, the 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 remnants of of our Olalo Hawaii within the school systems, right? And just recently, this past um, legislative session mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. this past council session, you know, we had two um, very interesting. Um, pieces of policy that were uh, uh, legislation that was um, introduced. So, mm. um, um, Rep. Bronco, right um, from the uh, east side of the island. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know what happens on the east side of the island. I don't know that side of the uh, island. That's where I'm well. from. I'll yeah, let you yeah, know later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm from Palolo, you know, I'm kind of <laughs> on that side, but not really, you know, Palolo She's really on the different border from, of, from well, you east, know, Palolo is east, real different from west. Kailua, yeah, um, but, 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 you know, and the, he and the represents, bill, the bill was, yeah, so he represents that area, but he, you know, brought forward a, a bill to apologize, you know, on behalf of the state, 
right, apologize to the Native Hawaiian people um, for that 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 forced kind of disconnection, you know, yeah. away from our Olelo Hawaii. Um, yeah, yeah but there's something system. about, you know, and I, to me, I mean, the, the people who are doing a lot of the apologizing, mm -hmm. this goes back to the apology bill, remember that? Mm -hmm. But they weren't, the ones who are apologizing weren't the ones who committed the oh, yeah. crime. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I, I want to say that one quick thing, because you mentioned it about, about the language. You know, we can look at removal of a language. A language is a vessel of any culture and any, any mm -hmm. identity. Uh, you take that away and you, and you, have, and you remove the identity of, of that person. I remember something when I, I used to work um, uh, with some of these characters over here at the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. <laughs> and, we, and there was an important uh, gathering and, and Governor uh, John Moihe and he said something that was really very profound, and that is sometimes change happens so slowly that you don't even you don't even realize it until it's 10, 20 years later, and it's like, oh my God, what happened? Right. But it happens slowly, and so we have to maka ala. Everyone yeah. needs to maka ala, and and sometimes you gotta push the fast forward button or the re rewind button and try to take a look at what's happened before you. You know, uh, they say that you you wanna see what tomorrow's gonna be like. Look at yesterday. Mm -hmm. That's kind oh, yeah. of that, and really, it's not. Yeah. It's not going to be much different. But over time, things will change, and the language removal, and then the language restoration in 1978, Constitutional Convention, mm -hmm. then recognizes uh, Olelo Hawaii as uh, Kaolelo. Uh, what's the word in Hawaiian? I can't even think of it, and because I'm, I'm not sure what language I'm speaking right now. <laughs> uh, the official language, or an official language, right. along with English. Right. So, uh, so mahalo. To uh, your right. east side, our east side representative. Yeah, yeah. Again, the name and the and the and the, the, the substance of the bill. Right. So, um, Rep. Bronco, sorry, I almost said his name wrong. Yeah. Um, introduced this bill again as an apology. And the reason why I think it's important, though, yeah. right, um, that what what he did there, and then what the um, Honolulu City Council did, yeah. followed up by recognizing Mahina Olelo Hawaii and actually having a piece of legislation that was introduced, yeah. Maka Olelo Hawaii, yeah. right? They're, they're small steps. I mean, some I may agree. say we're beyond that, right? We're like, okay, we're beyond all of that already. We're, you know, we're, we're, we're starting, we're hollow. Well, we're, we're really right? not really beyond it. Exactly. So maybe, exactly. maybe my That's point then, be, uh, the word in Hawaiian to, to me is to apologize. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe, at, and, and, I, and I haven't seen the, the actual language of the, of the bill. I'm not sure that I really need to but I think uh, similarly, and but not quite an apology, is, to, is for this uh, legislative body to recognize the, Im the severe impacts of the removal of the language, but to right. apologize for it. I, I, I felt the same way about the apology resolution, which, as we found out, really didn't have a whole lot of teeth. But it took a whole lot of years for Auntie Kina Kamali'i and, and, and all those other leaders at that time to make that happen. It is appreciated. Uh, these efforts, uh, but we have to remember too that uh, from the Hawaiian thinking, are you going to mihi for something you didn't do, aole paha? But you can recognize what you didn't do and say and and recognize the, right. the maybe the it's building impact. blocks, right? It's building blocks towards the the reconciliation, right? Um, so these apologies are yeah. meant to put the body actually the body so it's not necessarily rep bronco but it is the body the yeah. state itself being put on notice themselves so okay now the first step is a next step okay what is that reconciliation for us mm -hmm. that then you do to then on behalf of the body who committed the wrong yeah and or yeah. you know was part of that legacy yeah. of the the wrong did wrongdoing mm -hmm. that now it gets reconciled. But you know, also we have to remember that the people who did what we consider to be the wrongdoing didn't think they were doing wrong. Right. And we have to consider what they were thinking. And and, and I think I think sometimes that's you know, we think of Antipua Kanahele and her Makavalu, looking at things from different mm -hmm. uh, angles. Sometimes we just we just think about you know, and here's a good example of Hawaiian history. Uh, Captain Cook came, 1778, bad. Missionaries, 1820, bad. Overthrow, bad. Uh, annexation, bad. Statehood, you know, so, and that's all we know. But all of the in-between stuff and all kinds of mana mm -hmm. is in-between. Uh, that uh, it's, uh, it's always, big, always good to listen and consider what other people think. I do agree that it was absolutely devastating for our Lahui. You go to Japan and they don't speak Japanese, that would be very unusual, very odd. You go to Italy, nobody speaks Italian. That mm -hmm. would be like ridiculous. You go to France, parlez-vous français? Right. Huh? Huh? 
<laughs> you know, so um, anyway. right. No, and and that's a that's a great that's a great point. Um, you know, for that Manu, that we we must keep our keep our ears open. Yeah. Right. Keep our eyes open. Yeah. Utilize Makavalu um, when any of these kinds of actions happen. Right. I think it's a great first step on behalf of these bodies to to then have other things happen, you know, in the policy arena. I right. think it's, it's a necessary right. step. But you're right, as uh, as keepers of culture, yeah. right, and, and descendants. You know, what I, you know what I think of the mana of that particular legislation is, is that the legislators have to read it and they have to understand right. it. So many of them, are they don't know our own, uh, yeah. like, the history of our people. Yeah. So maybe the mana there is that, not, of, not really for us, is that they now understand a right. little bit more about where they're at and who uh, and the, the, That's the, the laws they are making for right. people. That is a significance of, of it. Is it informs the body yeah. of of the state, yeah. right? And and the city, right? It informs them of, yeah. of this. So it That's gives them cutting. an education, um, and then they can then yeah. act on uh, once they're educated, right? They're yeah. ignorant. Once they're educated yeah. um, to it, then they can hopefully make. The hope is that they make better policy. Yeah. The worst the, wor the worst scenario though is that when they do know the truth and they still uh, behave, then we vote them out. Yeah. We, then we vote them out. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that even that's, was in the case of our kupuna with the with the with the Ali Inui of their oh, yeah. or the oh, Ali yeah. Aimoku. If they, you had a bad chief, you know yeah. you get rid of them. Yeah, you take them op opihi picking at high tide. That's what you do. <laughs> You know, <laughs> and so now we're going to move um, and introduce our guests um, that we have here today. You know, I guess Mahalo Mahalo um, is a very special guest. I'm going to have to move my friends. chair over because we have yeah. to make room yes, for him. Yes, we have to right make room between. for him um, here. Uh, okay, we're not going to tell you what his name is, but it's the same as the prince who went to Congress in 1902, <laughs> elected 10 times in a row for two year terms, <laughs> Prince Jonah. That's the one. <laughs> yeah, him. Except him. his last name is not Kaliana Ole. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're gonna find out. <laughs> Here we go. I love how you know Mana is one of those people that you can't tell a secret to. Yeah, no, don't, don't. What? Why? What? Don't, because everybody gonna know. Oh. He gonna give everybody so much hints. Yeah, he gonna hint all around that you gonna figure him out. Yeah. Then he goes, I never tell nobody. I never tell nobody. I never say. I never say oh, that our mehana, special build an uapo no. and hele or iluna. Get over it. <laughs> he gonna say, I never say that our special guest was Kuhio we, Lewis, the CEO we, of the Council for Native Hawaiian CNHA. Advancement. CNHA. That's right. He's, he'll be right with us. He's uh, he's taking a call. We'll be back in a moment. Imagine. A destination experience that embraces our aina, people, and all that we love about home. A shared kuleana between kama aina and malihi. And a visitor industry focused on keeping Hawaii, Hawaii. It's time for a new chapter. Join the discussion at the Native Hawaiian Convention, July 19th to the 22nd. For more information, visit hawaiiancouncil.org. Aloha ho kako and welcome back. We now have our special guest that we was telling you guys about earlier. And it's none other than Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement, CEO, our dude, our guy, our man that we put out there to do all this incredible work. This that is Kuhio Lewis. Kuhio Lewis. Thank Lewis. you, Manu. Yes. Yes. Oh, oh. No, God of the kind. So you know, we got to build. build. You know, yeah. Hard working Hawaiian so, guy. Right. Thank you guys right. for He's doing so understated. This, this, this yeah. podcast. Thank you so much. I mean, uh, this, is, this is the third one. This is the third one. Yes, I'm yes. Excited, yeah. And we're having really good fun doing this, Kuhil, and I think we do it in your spirit because you've created such an environment here at CNHA where things like this can happen, yeah. right? Now, you have been here, Kuhil, for four years, only four years. And I say only four years because you've done an amazing amount of work in that four years. How was it when you first came into CNHA four years ago? Well, it's been a... I just want to emphasize, it definitely hasn't been a one-person show. It's been a kako effort. Uh, it takes a team to make anything happen. So it's been a building process. I think we have an amazing team that has allowed us to do great things for our lahui. And, um, but when we started, it was very humble. We, were, we started humble beginnings. Um, the organization was at a point of uh, julio, which is kind of uh, interesting because everything seems mm. to be huling these days. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was at a turning point. The organization was uh, was looking for some new energy, synergy. And so over time, we've been able to build up an amazing uh, 
incubator that's helping to and help an amazing you. team also yeah i remember that so four years ago <clears throat> you had just begun at the council for native hawaiian advancement and um and so the convention was not yet planned and you you i wasn't gonna say threw it together but you certainly didn't throw it together uh, you pulled it together uh, at the Hawaii Prince Hotel, and I don't know why. What stands out is that that royal blue color of the. Uh -huh. You remember the the the, the, yeah. the drapes the over there. The whole room, the lighting, just, everything I mean, it was, was, it was blue. very yeah. rich. And as it turns out, interestingly, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about this year's Native Hawaiian Convention. Is that um, it was a smaller venue, and you you were oversold. You, yeah, yeah. People, you had to yeah. turn people away. Yeah. We, so that's um, that shows, I think, some good well, energy, good mana. I think our community is hungry for finding a sense of place and you know being part of a larger community and so the convention that we have every year has served in that purpose mm -hmm. and yeah our, my first convention I started in on June 1st and our convention was three months later and I had never yeah. planned a convention before yeah um, and within our convention we had micro conventions like the one you hosted mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you and NTP we hosted <laughs> um, it was it was just good fun, you know. Everybody had fun. We celebrated Hawaii. We talked about our future, and that's what it's always about. It's about uh, being Hawaii. You know, what's, I, I, I want to speak uh, on behalf as a representative or a leader in the Hawaiian Civic Club's uh, world. You know, our conventions that have been going on for many many years are different from CNHA's Native Hawaiian conventions, and and, and here's the difference. And I think you know because you also serve on, on our board yes. uh, for the original um, Hawaiian Civic Club of Honolulu. The, First club that Kuhio <laughs> founded, not not this Kuhio, you know. um, the other one. But um, we uh, the civic clubs focus on resolutions, so trying to get the large body to agree on on issues. But but what you folks do really well and and differently is you really get right to issues and you discuss them and you bring in a lot of other people to. To represent that, so yeah. I'm looking forward to this year. Well, you know, Mano, we need a place to vision. We need a place to have conversation before you can get to resolutions and adopting policies. And I think that's the venue. That's what our venue provides mm -hmm. is a chance for us to develop ideas, to share in conversation, so that the association can have tools to advance on a policy. You know, I didn't look at it that way at all. And that is, first of all, very generous of you, <laughs> uh, with good, good ek, good right. foresight. And that's, that's awesome. Well, there you have it. It was meant to be. <laughs> you know, and that takes us, um, that, that's kind of what the impetus of the Native Hawaiian Convention was 20 years ago, right? So this would be the 21st year of convention, you know, and there's a there's a legacy that happens there. And you already kind of discussed why it's so important for the Lahui to kind of show up and have these discussions, because not only at the Civic Club's um, convention later on, but back in everybody's individual communities, when they go home and the lead session comes around mm -hmm. and or the city and counties um, have their sessions, we you know have a hand, or the convention has a hand in educating and empowering um, our Lahui when they go back home to their own communities on how it is that they tackle the issues that are facing them. You yeah. know what's really yeah. interesting, and, and before we talk about Huli here, you mentioned Huli out earlier, but I want to go back to what you just said about um, now you're bringing in another entity, uh, and that that is the state legislature, mm -hmm. formerly the territorial legislature. And there was a time when the legislators would go to the leaders of the Hawaiian Civic Club mm. of Honolulu to see or to ask almost permission or what or for guidance mm. from them. It has changed so much. You know, honestly, we have so many lawmakers who aren't even from here. It mm. really is, uh, uh, I'm not sure that even should be allowed. I mean, honestly, <laughs> you got to be kama'aina, kupa'aina. Right, right. right. You know, mm. well, and that's another issue. Right. But, but let, you talked about huliau earlier and a, a similar word, almost meaning the same thing, Hulihia, and that's a great, uh, a great theme for you guys. And, and uh, this explain. year, th this year's convention, we themed it Hulihia, mm -hmm. and the reason why is because we're coming out of a pandemic, and there are so many amazing opportunities for us to huli what existed. And sometimes it doesn't happen in the most graceful way. Sometimes you got to take it back. Mm -hmm. And so the theme Hulihia really is reflective in the time in which we are up in, and mm -hmm. where we have a chance to hooli things, to mm -hmm. look at what else can be, a transformative moment. And so that's why this convention is not just themed uh, hooli here, the activities <clears throat> associated with the convention is reflective of that as well. You know, but Mehana, explain about, because we talked about this uh, uh, separately, but the hooli here chants, and hi'iaka'ika polio pele, and how that, 
th th those uh, elements uh, come together and describe that same concept. Right, so that concept comes from our, our historical, our, our memory. Right, our, all of us have um, the, the DNA which carries this memory from antiquity, and Hiyakari Pele is that epic that connects us to that, mm -hmm. right? It gives us the actual language through the chants and talks about this turning over um, that happens in the environment, also very relative and related to what it is we do as Kanaka. Specifically, eruptions. eruptions so, Hulihia yeah. chants. Oftentimes, we'll describe an eruption, and even in our lifetimes, and we, we were mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. uh, just a few years ago to witness, and we saw the, the nightly news and may have gone over to mm -hmm. Mokuo Keave, but uh, the, the, the fire that comes from the earth, and it seems to be, on one hand, devastating, but what, what would be the hi'iaka interpretation of what the oh, lava does? It is necessary. It's a necessary function in order for all the growth to happen on top yes. of that. That rich soil that is created from that lava then greens the entirety of our landmass. The right? perfect and metaphor Jesus. for this year's mm -hmm. Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Convention, Hulihia. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What are some of the highlights, Kuhio, that people can expect when they come this year? Well, we're excited, first of all, because it's been two years mm -hmm. since we've been able to be together as a community. So we will absolutely celebrate our uh, resilience as a people once again, uh, how we've come through this and how we can talk about where we're going as a as a community now that this is coming to an end, or uh, and and so it's it, the convention is going to highlight things that I believe are critical. And Huli here, I'm going to connect it real quickly. Sometimes things don't get handed to you; you got to take it. And so these are all part of Huli. And so we're talking about tourism, what involvement natives have in tourism, and and how we can assert ourselves in that economic industry. We're going to be talking about housing. Our mm -hmm. people are priced out. Not just Hawaiians, everybody in Hawaii is mm -hmm. getting priced out. Economic prosperity is out of reach. So it, it's important that we talk about housing. It's important that we talk to the, those that are seeking uh, office this year. We have a big election upon us. So we want to know where you guys come from, what, what is your plans to lead our, our Hawaii. And so we'll be engaging some of the political candidates that are seeking office. And our convention is very nicely timed because the election is literally three weeks after that. So mm -hmm. we'll, hopefully we can get to know the candidates better and our lahui who uh, participate and engage will be able to make a decision based off those conversations we are also hosting the nahoku hanohano awards this year so that is another means in which we can celebrate uh, hawaii our mm -hmm. mele our hula and so for the first time we've joined forces mm -hmm. with uh, the hawaii academy Re recording artists and we will be allowing them our venue and our uh, partnership to support and uplift our amazing arti artists. That's a, you know, that's a great example, I think, of, of coming out of this ma'i ahulau, and that's a term for the pandemic, is that a lot of out-of-the-box out thinking has happened. And so that's a good, a, a good example of innovation, um, of, of bringing you know, partnerships and bringing people together that, that, are, that, may, that may seem or may have seemed before as almost right. unlikely. right. But that's a great idea, and, and what a you know what a if you're gonna dovetail on something, you may as well dovetail <laughs> right. on the stars of distinction. <laughs> yeah. Nahoku Hano Hano. Yeah. So me and Manu have both been nominated. Manu's the only one on this table who's actually won a Nahoku Hano Hano. <laughs> right. so, who's um, counting? But <laughs> <laughs> I think Manu has like eight probably by now. You oh know. come on! I have a simple nomination, a humble nomination. That's all. But um, we look forward to this. Yeah, right? no, the, yeah. Um, culture but, and, and music. Um, because and that is celebrate. the identity of our Lahui. And oh, that's, yeah. I, when I mentioned earlier, I didn't mean to be uh, disrespectful in any way about, you know, many of our lawmakers aren't even from here, but there is an identity and that aloha aina that is, rep, that, is uh, that comes to life through our mele and through singing and chanting. And uh, uh, either you have it or you don't. And uh, you can cultivate it. But I think that's what's missing sometimes in those people, as you mentioned, whether it's in tourism or in overall general lawmaking and policy making in Hawaii by people who have no idea where they are. But they came because they came to buy a slice of the sunset uh, in their retirement or, oh, yeah. and to own a little piece of paradise. Uh, meanwhile, we're in the Loi, <laughs> planting kalo to feed the kids. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And I, I love um, Kuhio, one of the things. So Kuhio used to work for me um, in our previous um, job. And uh -huh. then Another Huli here. <laughs> yeah, 
was only uh, yeah. yeah. You know, and then he, you know, he brought me um, over, and now I, now I work for him, and, and and I say that very proudly because one of the things that I, I love about Kuhil is is vision and also your unique ability to draw in partnerships, right? Because people want to partner with other people who are celebrating excellence, right, it, it, across the board, right? So this um, partnership with Nahoku Hanohano Awards and, and aloha to our, our ohana and our friends over at Ahara mm -hmm. um, for That's doing Hawaii this. That's Hawaii Academy of Recording Arts. <laughs> you know, for for seeing this as a great opportunity and a, and a, and a, and a good partnering, you know, of sorts for this. Um, but you've been able to do that, well, you know, uniquely across so many different elements um, that has really brought Hawaiians, right? You're, you're, the tagline, when if anybody ever asks me, what is a quote from Kuhio that impacts you? Now, I always say, Kuhio has articulated many times that Hawaiians, we are part of the solution of what's going on here in Hawaii, mm -hmm. right? So give us a chance, give us an opportunity to be there because we are part of that solution yeah. and we can make that happen. I'll just, I'll just, we, are, we are the solution, to be honest, mm. to Hawaii. Oh, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, Hawaii is not Hawaii without Kanaka. Oh, like. And so I think that's important is that we position ourselves to carry that kuleana in, mm -hmm. in all aspects. Um, and thank you for the introduction. Yes, Mehana used to be my boss at one time. <laughs> That's a whole other show. You though. know, but, but, but uh, so Kuhio, uh, obviously named for our Ali, also oh, yeah. Kalaniana Ole, uh, Kuhio, and, and he was named for his ancestors. But, you know, having uh, uh, participated in, in last year's uh, July 9th, 2021 centennial of the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act or the law, uh, in Washington, D.C., and we were, and, and, and we have a lot of knowledge and, and understanding of Kuhio, but you, are, he was, uh, our Ali was very much like that as well, mm -hmm. in being, in, and he, because he was a gentleman. He will, and he, and you, it, to be a good leader, you have to know how to be a good follower. You oh. cannot just lead, lead, lead. You somebody turn around and, oh, nobody behind <laughs> you. You know, and to be a good speaker, you have to, or a good writer, you have to be a good reader. And uh, you know, and uh, or a good listener as well. Yeah, so those are the kinds of things, and they're very subtle in yeah. in leadership. Uh, listen and and uh, and consider. But you are you do a great job in yeah, bringing people you know, together. Definitely bellow there. You Thank know, you guys. With Without even job. trying, we, you're wearing lehua. You you're wearing besides your beautiful le. You have hala, and we have kalo over here. It's like all the kino law have come together <laughs> without even trying. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Well, congratulations to you uh, again. Four years <laughs> and four is a good. Four is ha in Hawaiian and ha is also the breath of life, and yeah. so this is an important. That was our year. moment for the. That was our <laughs> moment for the day. Yeah. Ha. But uh, well, yeah. Ho'omaika inu ya oko, and I'm and I'm very uh, uh, happy to be as a as a you know, as a cousin from the other side of the fence, coming home in schools, uh, and with the council of, uh, for Native Hawaiian advancement, uh, and doing continuing to do good work and being innovative. Thank you, Manu, for being a part of this this show, this midday manao. I think um, it's an example of coming together, you mm -hmm. know, and that's really what it is. It's it's all of us working to bring our capacities together to make something positive, and you see that in some of the work, whether it's our convention, whether it's even this show. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot to offer. We are the solution. So, mm -hmm. mahalo for being a part of this. I am my no kaho only my pleasure, and uh, thank you. Look forward to hulihia. And uh, maybe there's some information we can put online mm -hmm. for... Uh, Definitely. HawaiianCouncil.org. Um, you just go to our website and you will see our registration. All the information, all the fun stuff is all up on there right now. So go there um, directly. But, you know, on behalf of CNHA, to all of you um, out there, on behalf of CNHA, our CEO, Kuhio Lewis, our many hands that work here and hearts that work here and our members that are out there. We'd like to thank all of you for joining us. We'd also like to thank our sponsors for this. Besides the Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement, we have Kaiser Permanente, the Community Fund, Benefit Fund um, that they have there. Thank you so much for your guys' um, contribution to this podcast. And go to hawaiiancouncil.org slash podcast and subscribe so that you can get notices every time that we go um, on and present a show. And this has been the conclusion of another great show um, from here. Oh, oh, before we go. Okay, so see, I was so like the kind, trying to <laughs> hurry up and round everything out that I forgot. Manu? Yes. Can we do 
our word of the day. Yes. Yeah. So let's give a mana'o about the word aloha. We, okay, and that's a what a great word. And and you know, uh, I think Kuhio said it earlier also about being being the solution. I think aloha as a as a and it, uh, elements of aloha are not unique to Hawaiians or to Hawaii. I mean, people have this regard for one another. We know aloha as uh, being affection, love, uh, romance, also as, as a greeting or, or, as, or a salutation. Uh, we say aloha all the time, and, and we mean it. But what I think, I, and I've heard this uh, by, uh, from many people, that it goes back to Pilahi Paki. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and she bro kind of broke it down in kind of a more of a modern way of what your A is for Akahai, kindness, and L is for Lokahi, and so on. But she, I think she also identified that the, it, what the world, literally what the world needs is yeah. aloha. And that is something, and that's not to be ho'okano or to be ho'oyo, no. when we say that, and, and you say Hawaiians are the solution. And that, that reminds us for all of our, our cousins out there, our relatives, our, our lahui, is that we have, to, we have to work a little harder. We've been through a lot. We've been kind of, a, we've had a, a, a bad rap for, in many ways, but we've also had huge successes. And so in order for us to really offer that aloha sincerely, not just to each other, Aloha kekahi kekahi, but uh, to the to the community, to the po'e malihini, the settlers, and to uh, the rest of the world. Yeah, oh. I, can I add? Yeah. So the please. quote from Anti Pilahi is: "As they search for world peace, the world will turn to Hawaii because Hawaii has the key, and that key is aloha." Well, you see. Oh yeah, vale. but, I, but he cheated. He looked on his phone. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to shoot from the kikala. You know what I'm saying? No, but no, but Mike, and mahalo for sharing that. That was good, good information. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. I just felt like you know, I yes, I get to share one like, kind of haku. That's something. right because you work for me at this point. <laughs> Another huli here, right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nui ke aloha ya oko pakahi a pau. Aye. Okay, ako ako mai ike ia avakea nei. Uh, mahalo no hoi. Uh, hoi mai ho ya oko uh, me kako nei. Mm -hmm. uh, ike ia pule ae. And then ho mauana ke kuka. Basically, kuka, aloha and come back next week. Oh yeah. That, that, oh yeah. That, that's, there it is. Hui ho, hui ho kako. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, mm, mm. mm.